Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I am your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This episode, Simi and I are going to discuss uh, some cool things going on in the world of Hero Clicks, like Empire being released, uh, some tournaments that have been happening, and we're going to do a Thread Dead Redemption this week. This is episode three hundred ninety-four. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So, if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools? It's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your order. Wow, 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 wow. Hey, uh, thanks, thanks, boss, man. Um, you, uh, you take it easy, all right? Yeah, get some sleep. We'll see you again in a few months. Uh, bye. Hey, what's up? It's me, Calder again. Uh, Simeon is joining me in the studio. Your dialogue for your champion. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, that poor boss man. He's had a high turnover rate. It's uh, their new drug testing policies really. Well, got his employees. Rid of some losing, employees. <laughs> he's losing. Yeah, he's losing a lot of employees. Um, had to make uh, let some let some good people go because they can't they can't give up the. Uh, Booger sugar. No, so it's, <laughs> it's that what the kids are calling it. That's what that's what I'm sticking with. It's, uh, uh, instead of sweet and low, it's a uh, sweet and high. Nah, yeah. Give you a little it's a little sweet, give you a little high. Uh so, so Simeon, what uh what made you happy this week, my man? This week what made me happy, so I finally got my phone in. It was pushed back a little bit, but I'm you know once like burned always like fearful because uh my desk as you all know was pushed back a little bit um uh, but no I, I got my phone in been setting that up uh finally can get back on discord while i'm out and about so i don't have to wait till i get back to my computer which is really nice it's nice to be able to interact like more fully than i was before um and then i also went and saw spider-man no way home last night oh nice um, and man that is indeed a movie that has Tom Holland in it. Just very, very surprising. Uh, no, I. In truth, I, I spent a little bit of effort, as opposed to my normal zero amount of effort to avoid spoilers and trailers and stuff like that. Um, not really big into trailers, anyhow. I kind of just see whatever I want to see. But the movie did surprise me in multiple ways, which is really good. Nice. And it was, yeah, it was just a very enjoyable movie. Um, I have no, uh, let's see, advice for people out there that haven't seen it yet, other than, you know, if you can, try to do so before it gets, like, crazy spoiled, because it probably will. Um, but, yeah, it, it's also just a really good movie. And uh, my other piece of advice is there's two after credit scenes, which you could probably Google that, but... You heard it here first, I guess. Probably here first. I imagine so. Dude, that's pretty awesome. Uh, that's great. I did not see Spider-Man last night. This is what made me happy this week, though. I instead watched probably the um, worst movie I've seen in a while. Um, but it's it's so bad, it's you can, like, make fun of it. So it's, like, kind of a fun watch. You know what I mean? It's like, Simi, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I actually, um, yeah, I did that, too. Um it's like an old oh, yeah? John Cusack movie. I watched a really old oh. one this week. Didn't make nice. me happy, but movies that are really old and real good. Oof. There you go. But in a bad way. Uh, in a bad, yeah. Well, that's so that's fun, though. Um, so I watched, I think it's called The Twelve Dog Days of Christmas, or it's something weird. I, I, I honestly, they, they had already started watching the movie when I popped into the room. So I just caught the last 50 minutes of it. Uh, the premise is that this kid is sentenced to a certain amount of hours at a community, like, shelter, community service, right? Um, 
is at a dog shelter and they're going to euthanize all these dogs on Christmas Day. And I don't care how evil you are or like what you, the villain you are in any movie. You're not clocking into work on Christmas Day like, oh, well, all right, got to euthanize these dogs. Like, I don't, I don't, what a ridiculous premise that they would murder the, all these dogs on Christmas Day. But that's like a truly, uh, like, Ah, as a Christmas present to myself, I will murder these right? animals. <laughs> like, right? Yeah, that's some sinister stuff. We don't even get, like, a bad guy. It's just, like, someone's going to kill the dogs on Christmas Day if they don't get a home. Like, we don't even get, like, a Corella DeVille character where you're like, oh, yeah, they would euthanize dogs for Christmas. That would give them a merry, or whatever, you know, right? So it's it's this really weird story of them just trying to find um, homes for these dogs before Christmas, Right, and the kid, you can tell um, which scenes they shot because his acting is better in certain parts and worse in certain parts. And there are scenes throughout the movie where it's him and these two like younger like kids, and he talks like an NPC to them. They'll be like, so are you finding homes for the dogs? Yeah, I'm trying to. So it's like, okay. Um, so how's everything going? Why? Thanks for asking. It's going swell. Like, what are these, like predetermined answers you have for these like the script is terrible the kids Great acting weather for this is, time of year yeah <laughs> yeah and it's it's so weird but yeah it was just it was such a weird movie i urge anybody that likes to make fun of movies riff on movies um who also wants to make fun of christmas movies i would say watch that i don't remember what it's called but you probably find it somehow um yeah, and then watch dogs euthanized christmas movie christmas movie yeah and it's Dude, surely it's gonna pop up. Yeah, if you bing it, you'll probably get a different answer than if you duck, yeah. duck, go it. But we'll see. What Definitely happens. don't bing it. You don't know what will show up. It might be horrible. <laughs> you'll you'll see some dogs being euthanized on Christmas oh, if you God. bing it. <laughs> um, no, and then I watched another movie, another Christmas movie here, of course, starring the Queen of Christmas, Vanessa Hutchins, and it's A Night Before Christmas. But but night is is spelled with a K, Simeon. So you can probably guess the entire premise of this movie that's right a knight from the middle ages is sent to the future and by future i mean 2019 um and his goal is to just fall in love with vanessa hutchins's character um so that way he can become a knight and dude they go through they like speed run movie tropes like all in like 10 minutes like the first 10 minutes it's like who's vanessa hutchins character oh she's a single yet hard-working teacher but she doesn't have much to do around Christmas time because she's a teacher. And it's like, okay, yep, so single single girl, uh, good good job, teacher, you know, barista, it whatever. Like businesswoman um, or, like, CEO I, oh, lady. Yeah, stuck-up businesswoman, comes back to her small town or whatever, you know, yeah. for the holidays and falls in love with small-town hunk who, like, chops trees or something. Manages oh, but she... Show her the true meaning of Christmas once in, again. In the first 10 minutes of this sizes. movie, uh, first, like, 10, 20 minutes, she spills hot cocoa on him. Uh, oh, no. Trope uh, hits him with her car, take which that is also suit of a trope. Armor off before it rusts. Exactly right. Oh, what he has um, abs under that armor. <gasps> yeah, takes this... him home. He takes a shower. He is whoa. He's chiseled. <laughs> this dorky um, knight turned out to be a real hunk. Hunk. Yeah, <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, yeah, so spills hot chocolate. Hits him with her car. Um, has no place to stay, so he has to stay at her house. You know, uh, in the guest house or whatever. Um, just all all these tropes. They go Christmas tree shopping to get. It's just like he's a knight, so it's funny. And then he tries like real world slang, so he says like lit af and stuff. And you're like, oh, this is painfully bad. Um, but yeah, like so, I would recommend if you if you want to riff on some movies, A Night Before Christmas, and then the Twelve Dog Days of Euthanization is they're both pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and if anyone if anyone knows anything, they know that riffing on slang as if you don't know it is not good humor and should never be done <laughs> yeah we definitely didn't do that two podcasts you episodes no never no 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 you no. wouldn't you would be, never that'd be no cap if we did that yeah it would be <laughs> i still don't know what it means yeah. at this point i don't want to so I'm too afraid to ask, actually. No, uh, I, all right. I think that's better than watching, like, Rudolph for the 18th time, is watching, yeah. just, like, start burning through all of the, like, horribly pumped out generic Christmas movies. I think so. I think it's I think it's solid. Um, something to look forward to. And, you know, they're, 
they're slightly easier to make fun of. Like, the Netflix original ones are easier to make fun of than, like, Hallmark ones. Because Hallmark, um, I don't know, they, they're supposed to have a lot of heart, and yet they feel soulless. You know what I mean? It's like, it's yeah. that formula they have. Yeah. It's um, like a um, a Mad Lib. Where it's yeah, like, basically. It's, it's a Mad Lib, but instead of, like, adjective noun, it's, like, extremely specific, and you have to, like, circle one of the two options. Yeah, so right. Like hardworking single mom or like lady who didn't have time for family because she was too busy getting good at business. Business. It's like, will we ever actually see her do business? No, she'll wear a suit and like get coffee. Yeah, we, like yell at someone on the like, phone. Yeah, like sit at a computer or something like right. Will we see her like in a meeting? No, no definitely not. No. She's um, like, what I is, don't believe what is her company? Not anymore. What does her company do? It's no clue. Her company could be anything for all we know. Um, yeah. Okay. Hey, wanna, let's. Uh, I want to meet these people that are willing to change their entire life over the course of like a one week Christmas vacation. I, mean, like, it's, I it's met this guy who just lives completely Christmas. different than me, so I'm going to quit my job and move to this small town. Like, lives I off think... of uh, his chicken farm and cans vegetables. <laughs> I think I'm gonna I'm gonna marry him. Yeah. I want to see that movie, except the dude is like a prepper so he like lives in a bunker oh dude yes <laughs> and the lady's <laughs> like this like free spirit like uh travels around and he's like you shouldn't travel so much you should come down in my bunker with me and you might survive the apocalypse actually i it's think they like... made that movie i think that's like 29 cloverfield lane or whatever that one was oh gosh now that i think about Wait. it i think they already did that that it's a, that's already a christmas movie with uh i can't remember the name of that actor the big guy, John. Show. Oh, it's Jing all the way. Uh, I think it's yeah, John. I, I don't. John something. Ham. Something. No. Ham. Let's move on from this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's devolving quickly. Yeah, dude, it is. It really is. So, in the news of HeroClix. Speaking of developing quickly. Developing quickly. There were some world tournaments, Simeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So up in the Pacific Northwest, we had the in-person Eagle Cast unofficial HeroClix World Championship. Um, I should have looked up who won it because someone did. Indeed, they did. Congratulations to that person. Uh, also... There was the broadcast slash possibly critical clicks. Not really sure what all was going on there. A uh, bunch of stuff, yeah. Unofficial online world championship. And I do know who won that. I think it was Caleb Reddick. Uh, with a, Congratulations. A Congratulations. That was consisting of multiple figures. So also oh, it makes sense. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, surprising didn't go with the tactic of playing no figures, but uh, I'm sure all competitors did their best, and it sounds like they had an amount of fun. Um, nice. Yeah, that's all we have. Hey, that's uh, that's pretty cool, right? Like, that's fun, right? Like, hey, uh, this world's sort of not really. Um, but you know, I I know that WizKids is really like pumping at the bit to do worlds and nats this next year. So I am excited for big tournaments, hopefully uh, coming up soon. So I, I will consider uh, some of the in-person tournaments. Like, if they looked at like a um. A clicks cup, or heck, even the uh, the not nationals that the Army National Guard in Indianapolis held last year. Uh, if they look at those, uh, both I, in my opinion, equally fun. I heavily enjoyed both tournaments going to them. Uh, those were fun stand-ins for nationals. I just, you know, not a big online play person. Would rather just not play Hero Clicks than play online. If I'm yeah. being honest, um, that's because I have the choice in real life to play Hero Clicks, and I understand right. not everybody has that choice right now. So, um, yeah, uh, and obviously, also if you are just jazzing to play some tree hunted modern, um, there is uh, whatever you want to really want to fly out. You can fly out all sorts of places and play in worlds, which is cool. So, yeah. um, I don't have much to say because I have you know not paid attention to the meta since rise and fall because i can't stand the meta after rise and fall um so as far as i'm concerned i am the uh south dakota champion uh winning master mold of course in my 300 modern uh team and then that's all that that's all that matters really 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all I got. for Heroclix champion, so like... I guess that's true. What you do I have to care about worlds when I... Right. You know, I was going to say rule the world, but that's, that wouldn't make sense then. No. Uh, something no. something more... More than the world? <laughs> the moon as well? <laughs> yes. Like, what do you... Yeah, I was going to say uh, something like Jupiter less tangible... I own okay. I own the respect of everyone in the world instead of the world itself. There we go. Ooh, yes. things that will also never happen. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Dang. Not even like a a quarter of a quarter of an infinitesimally small amount of Ooh. the world. Probably of the respective majority of our listeners, I would say. I would assume. I would assume if they listen to the show. So that would be a, a good amount of the Heroclix community. No, a I mean it is a, a portion of the at least active hero clicks community for sure. Right. Active, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Speaking of being active members of the hero clicks community, you should subscribe to the Dial H for Hero Clicks YouTube channel, so that way we have more subscribers. That's it. That was just a super weak plug, but I mean, if you enjoyed this weekly content. Uh, and if you enjoyed our last episode, which was uh, almost four hours long, and you want to see the dials side by side while we're talking. Uh, you can do that on YouTube. You can check that out. We also have a bunch of gameplay videos coming up. If you're familiar with the voice I did earlier, one of those videos is uh, coming up very soon, uh, potentially this weekend. We'll we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and all sorts of cool stuff. So, yeah, definitely subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. Um, that's about all I have to talk about for, for Worlds. News-wise, Empire's out. Simeon, did you play any pre-release? Any Empire? Um, for no, you, not dude? yet. Um, okay. So I I skipped Heroclix last night, which would have been my normal Heroclix night, to of course see Spider Man No Way Home. Spoiler: oh, yeah. He does find his way home at some point. Oh dang! He actually goes into the apartment that he lives in, and uh, <sighs> yep. Would you ruin the movie like that for me? Yeah. I mean, it turns out it had it had nothing to do with a lack of GPS. Strange. <sighs> But it was strange. Strange, yeah. <laughs> um, Gosh, I don't even remember what I was segueing from. Sealed or <laughs> no? Yeah, empire. So opening empire to. I have not gone to uh, my local shop. I found out they had it on Thursday, but I didn't manage to go there before I went to the movie. And then, of course, I don't know if they shifted to sealed uh, Thursday night or. <clears throat> what exactly they ended up doing because I wasn't there for it. So like sometimes when new sets release, even if I am not playing in like a sealed, if we're doing like 400, whatever, or 300, whatever, I'll just buy a couple boosters and build a team for that night. Cause it, like, we're not playing for anything. It doesn't really matter. And I just kind of want to get experience one building and sealed and two, uh, buying product, getting like some of the set that I want. So that's probably okay. what I'll do next Thursday. And I might just pick up a couple boosters here and there over the week. I am really bummed because our seal tournament is going to happen this Friday, but I will be doing a, a play. I obviously am still an elf. Never wished for a show to only have been one weekend. I honestly so far removed from last weekend that I just do not want... It, I very well do not want to do this next weekend of shows. I just, I do not care. And I'm glad I have that attitude because I'm sure everybody that paid money to watch the show really wants the actor <laughs> in it to be like, like I don't really care. I really <laughs> can't see, I can't wait to see Nicolas Cage playing Nicolas Cage and just phoning it in for two hours. Yeah. Yeah. So my, I don't know. I'm going to do my best to not phone it in. Probably once I actually get backstage, I don't know, I'll feel like Holly and Jolly or some, you know, some BS like that. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I will just be thinking about it the entire time that there is a empire pre-release or release or I don't know, whatever. It's weird. The set was weird. Um, staggered, you know how it would be. Um, so like, I'll just be thinking about how there's that going on, you know, 70 miles away, wishing I was there instead, you know? So I'm um, just, I'm still stuck on, uh, oh. your, your play stuff. It's, I'm, I've got a new Hollywood script in my mind. Yeah. This really? ranch hand stage actor lost oh his holiday spirit until Goodness. he went backstage and he found more holly and jolly than he could handle. I, I don't know where to go from there. Okay. But... okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, dude, absolutely. No, that's, that's a, you know, a sad lifetime movie. He's just a, he's just an oppressed gamer that wants to play a stupid miniatures game. 
Instead, he's got to do community theater. Will he, will he muster the, the will? Yeah, will he muster the will to actually give his all and make the show happy, merry friggin' Christmas for everybody in attendance? Or is his Grinch-like heart going to spoil the show for everyone? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> gosh. But, yeah, that's um, that's Empire. I'm excited to open some of it. Simeon, you've been looking at people open it online. What's the what's the case breakdown going on here? Uh, what Calder was talking about, um, the... I don't know what do we what do we call this the distribution kind of breakdown of bricks and yeah. cases that we've been seeing for uh, Empire set. Um, it's so don't hold anyone to this because it's not every brick, it's not every case, but it does seem like more often in this set than in previous sets we've seen. Which in previous sets it's almost never the case. Um, but we've seen multiple chases in a single brick and bricks with primes and chases in them. So there's one post here on the HeroClix subreddit where out of a, I believe this was a, yeah, this was a case, out of a case, the person pulled three chases and a rare prime. Uh, locally, somebody pulled a super rare prime out of a case. Uh, it was a super rare prime and I think it was three chases as well. So... It looks like the primes are no longer taking a slot of like what would oh. normally be the chase in the set, oh, yeah. which is really cool. Uh, but that's not necessarily like the law or like, a, you know, that's not written in stone. That's, you know, just some people's pulls seem to be like tending that way. And I know the okay. last time I saw this uh, was Batman animated series when we had like 12 chases and every so often, there would be a brick that had two. It's really cool when it happens, but it does not happen very often. Yeah, dude. So, I mean, that makes me kind of excited because I'm not... This set isn't like a big resale set for me like Wonder Woman was. This is more so I'm buying a case because I want, you know, two-ish, three of the chases. I want the super rare prime. I want some good super rare. So tradeability hopefully with the set is going to be pretty high or just i get lucky and i pull ricky and thanos you know and i just call her call her a day you know it should be great um so that is really cool that's interesting though compared to like um rise and fall which had what we would consider normal right yeah like so where it's like a prime like a, brick like and then a, a base chase brick and with wonder Woman, which was a, a chase every brick you know now this thing where it's like potential two chases and a brick right. prime and then there's house Wild. of x which was something there was uh there was a lot going on there was a lot going on with house of x yeah whole bunch of bunch of weird stuff so and so normally we've only ever seen yeah. the two chase thing and i'm, I'm not going to say like there's any way to really nail like an exact science to this, but it seems to trend more towards sets that have a lot of chases. Um, this set only had, let's see, 10? No, this set did have nine chases, um, I think. I'm, I think it was nine, uh, which is closer to like the, I think if it's if a set's got six or like seven then they tend to only do one per brick, one per case, something like that. Um, but yeah, it is cool because normally when you buy a case, if you open your first brick out of the case and you pull your chase, you're like, well, that's the chase I had. Um, but in this time case... to sell this brick on Amazon. Yeah, time to sell this and I'll tell stiff somebody with a, a, a rare prime. Um, but no, it doesn't look like that's the case this time around. It looks like if you pull a chase in one brick you might pull one in the other as well you might even t pull two in the other who knows but uh that also does mean slightly for the the resale rate of this set um if the chases are allocated at like a higher amount i.e like if they're easier to get that means that uh their rarity is actually like less than like a normal chase's rarity and so right the price of these chases should go down if that's the actual if that actually ends up being like kind of a distribution thing that we see like a trend uh and everyone who buys sealed for this ends up getting like at minimum two out of a case and in some instances two out of a brick 
then yeah, like most of these chases should end up being cheaper than uh, like X Men Rise and Fall I, and Wonder yeah. Woman eighty kind of ones. Theoretically, yes, right. And even then, Wonder Woman eighty shouldn't have had that expensive of chases. Yet they were fairly spendy in the seventy to a hundred plus, like you know, ninety to a hundred plus dollar range. There in the beginning, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, they weren't like what we would consider like low to average like chase price. Like low chases are down the forties and fifties, you know. And that's what you'd especially think for some of them that were like bad chases, but like the good chases still around like you get a 90 or like 105 or so for them you know for like a commissioner a sky tyrant a scarab guy gardener that kind of stuff you know the other ones were still like around 50 to 60 which is solid i feel like these ones should probably be because they're not good there's really no chase besides venom magneto yeah venom magneto that's like really on really a good, lot of teams for you know cheap. like um it, they all run into that problem of being kind of bigger, bulkier characters that are, don't quite do a good job of being big, bulky characters. So, yeah, like, they should be, I don't know, they should be around 40 to 50 is what I would feel comfortable paying for these chases. I yeah. feel like some are just going to be higher than others because they are still cool alternate versions of characters. You know, Captain America, uh, Harold Thor... Um, Silver Surfer, Deadpool, uh, Beast, Sorcerer. Like, those are still, like, cool alternate takes on characters. But, like, playability-wise, they don't have a ton. Um, yeah, there's only, like, yeah. three of these chases that I would be, like, not upset with, but there's only three of these chases that I wouldn't necessarily, like, want to have at some point. Uh, the rest of them, like Sentry Hulk, Venom Magneto, they're all really cool sculpts, and I'd really like to shelve them at some point, which is, sounds like such a, a terrible way to talk about, like, a game piece. I'd like to never play this, is what I'm saying. Um, yeah. That's my favorite yeah. part about Heroclix, is when Aww. I can just stop playing it and just display all my things that I could play with, uh, like a dragon just hoarding. Uh, but no, I, I think that uh, these will hold their value until the next set which i mean that's what chases normally do but i don't see even with venom magneto uh venom magneto just hits a couple keywords really well but even yeah. like with that piece i think that like monster has its own tk i don't know if it has it for 35 but there's there's always like stuff that comes out that's new and it's going to push the like old hotness out which it's be Venom Magneto being probably the most usable of these chases, and even then, I can see like double TK not being as necessary. Yeah, I think these will all drop in price pretty pretty handily, and hopefully by the time rotation hits, uh, they'll all be going for about like thirty to fifty. It's just like double TK is obviously really really good, but with Flash and Oz, even though that's like a seventy. 60 whatever point combo I guess if it's 60 it's a 90 point combo but like flash and oz sure you get that extra two squares but then it's two actions for tk versus one action so i could see maybe him with an oz for 75 points still seems kind of like a lot yeah. um so this, yes, he doesn't have prob, this magneto like to me is more strange. of like a you're paying 35 points to do like a single action uh tk and two objects back because with Oz on the board at any point against you, uh, like, really screws up your TK lines. Just, we're in a weird time for the power of telekinesis, where normally, at any other time, because there was that um, Jean Grey from Uncanny X-Men that had, but she was 50 points, and she could do TK, right, once is normal, once is free. Um, she was obviously used a lot. But that was, like, just a different era. You know what I mean? It's like how people go nuts. Like, oh, man, that, that Scarlet Witch from Chaos War, she was crazy. And you're like, how you look back on it, you're like, this was crazy? For 50 points, this was crazy. You know what I mean? Like, era of the game where even though they do the same thing, Andy's less points with what figures do with TK, it it's, depends on the team, maybe the keyword or whatever, whether or not it's better than a Flash or Oz type of scenario yeah it's really it's just it's interesting it really is so and i still think obviously he's really good don't get me wrong yeah 
right? Uh, like, Commissioner already does so much. Like, I mean, it's. I'm not saying he's not good. He's obviously really good. It's just saying it's it's a weird time for Hero Clicks. Very strange, but yeah, no, I'm excited for uh, for my case to get here. Uh, do an unboxing, probably gonna do a brick one day, brick the next day. Um, some good dial each videos. We're gonna end the year off here, guys. They are gonna be real strong and real good. Trust me. So it's gonna be cool. Uh, but that's basically all I want to say about Empire. I'm excited to get some stuff open. I'm excited to play with a lot of figures in the set. I think there's a lot of really fun figures um, in it, which is cool. Fun stuff brought to captains and sidekicks. Fun stuff for mission points. Fun, just weird versions of characters that I think are neat. So I'm excited. Yeah, I would have liked to have gotten like one more mission point figure. Um, yeah, we have three. Is that right? Three Gamora, three, Gamora, and, and the then Ultrons. Both Ultrons. Yeah, there is a weird point of contention with that infamous Iron Man, where it says uh, you may activate each of his other plot point abilities. So each of his other plot point abilities. So I'm assuming that doesn't mean you can reactivate the not the minus five once per turn for plus zero PP uh, plot points. And when infants, yeah. So it's, it's strange because you might actually be able to turn him to click one more than once per game by using like the minus five effect. It's just clearly that can't be how they intend it to be like for zero plot points, because that would just be kind of broken. Uh, yeah. For 100 points. I guess it wouldn't be necessarily broken. His dial really isn't that amazing. You could probably yeah. get through it in one turn, but who am I to say? I don't know. I don't think you get to that turn anyhow. That's turn like five or six probably between clearing and everything. I don't think you get five plot points and activate that in most games and still have time to like do the whole thing again, but... Yeah, it's not happening. I think so. I it's yeah to win on plot points. No, no, definitely not. Oh, okay then. You wanna just go right down to a little thread at redemption here, Simeon? Yeah, let's hit the road. Road, friend. I just wanted to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see, let alone reason. Now, reasoning ain't never been one of my strong points neither. But see, and I do just fine. Let's hit the weird online poker playing road. No, 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 <laughs> stop. No, goodness gracious. I'm sick and tired of that person, of that song. 2021, it is current year. Can we not sing it anymore, please, it ever? Current year. Yeah, it's current year. Let's stop. Um, hey, you found this on Reddit. Yeah, I'll, so why don't you go ahead? And give for her, those who are aware, read. Um, Reddit can be used for more than just arguing about stuff. You can argue about hero clicks. So there is a hero clicks nice. subreddit, r slash hero clicks. Uh, I don't go there as often as I used to. I used to pop into the rules thread all the time and answer questions about rules and like kind of helped me be a better like more knowledgeable about the game by looking up like I wouldn't always know the answer but I would usually look up in like the rule books anyhow and then like their errata's and stuff and just kind of there's a lot of questions that are easy and like kind of basic questions but then there's some that are more interesting where it's like how do these powers combine kind of thing um like special powers so I haven't been on the subreddit for a while but I stopped in stopped in you know parked my horse in the old Ponderosa oh, and oh. Uh, waltzed into the subreddit. And uh, I was just looking for some sort of discussion that was like literally anything that wasn't like basic, whatever. And in doing so, I saw this post by Article Turbulent. So the post was called The Metagame, which piqued my interest. So I began reading. And so the post goes, Hey guys, I wanted to have a discussion about the recent sets that have come out and how it seems that WizKids has jet has greatly dialed back, no pun intended, the meta viability in these last few sets. First off, I'm a very new player, 
So maybe I'm misinformed, but after listening to the Dial H podcast, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sucks. You could whoa. not be misinformed after listening possible. to Dial H. <laughs> That's no way. Impossible. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is the part where I like really piqued my interest. I was like, oh, let's see what people have to say. Uh, but it, they continue, uh, I began to think that maybe WizKids is trying to get rid of meta teams and figures. You know, the Vulture Primes and the Unimines. I think that maybe they are trying to balance the game so that there aren't people doing these insane team builds that take the fun out of the game. Don't get me wrong, I love competitive games, but when there's that one piece in the game that is easy to use and hard to lose with, then I find it pointless to even play competitively because you are either building a team to beat that OP figure or you have no choice but to also build that meta team. According to the podcast, nothing, that's us, uh, nothing has really made an impact on the meta of Heroclix so far, and I think it's for the best. Encouraging more variety. Let me know what you guys think. So this was, I assume, in response to our big episode about Empire and how me and Calder right. were essentially not really blown away. I don't think we we pull, didn't really pull any punches. We might have pulled a few here and there, but there just was not a lot of stuff in the set that like just screamed like this is competitive to us. And yeah. That's mostly because, you know, I don't keep track of what keywords are doing really good and what like keywords are missing, what kind of things. But, um, no, there's just there's a lot of like flavor and a lot of interesting stuff in the set. There just wasn't that. Oh yeah, this is a really good piece. Like even Black Leopard in like the Fantastic Four set, it was like, oh, like I can see how this is going to be a really good piece. Uh, but the like the rare prime in this set, T'Chaka Two, is a charge flurry stealth blades piece, um, I... that like has a die replacement kind of effect. So it's you know it's interesting, but is it like better? I don't think so. So like a lot of things kind of fell under that kind of wing when we were reviewing the set as uh, the like super scroll from the set, not nearly as good as the previous one, especially in like competitive circumstances. Like a lot of things hit that same kind of thing. There's a few figures that stood out, but um, I think that this post was mostly made in response to our review for that. And looking back, I I'm assuming when we went over X-Men Rise and Fall, it was probably the same. We probably said, uh, you know, Professor X and Magneto for the swap teams. Uh, yeah. We might have talked a little Emperor bit about... Gladiator. Yeah, Gladiator, Emperor Gladiator, um, Mimic Prime even. And then <clears throat> I think like Diamond Patch and... I don't even yeah. know if I gave any credit to Weapon Hex because I really want to like Weapon Hex, but I just don't think it's at all competitive. Um but yeah, so like it does, in fairness, I think uh, just according to us, what we've said, uh, the last couple sets since Wonder Woman have kind of been like a trending downward meta where there aren't as big obvious figures that are meta potential in most of these sets. There are like, of course, always going to be some, but it doesn't like seem to be as many. Yeah, I mean... I think each set, except for Empire, has really shaken up. And that's that's assuming in Empire that, like, the figures that we think that are just broken, broken. Like, physically, this probably isn't supposed to be how they work. Like, Rogue, right. Rogue, Rogue is, yeah. and um, that Wolverine with the swap potential of just never being yeah. attacked, right? So, if we consider those two characters, that that's not how they're supposed to act. And even then, if that is how they're supposed to act, they're still only 75 and 50 points of the build, so I don't think they impacted a crazy, crazy amount. Like, a Wonder Woman changed the entire face of how teams work with the uh, Secret Six and the Lassos and all that jazz, right? Um, same thing with Rise and Fall. Yeah. They changed the Wonder complete Woman meta landscape. Two new metas. We had the, yeah. the shifting focus Wonder Woman for quite a while yep. that could shut down teams, and we have like the continuing um, force of like Sky Tyrant, Commissioner, um, the flashes, like you know, the flashes, huge, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, X Men yeah. Rise and Fall. I haven't, I haven't seen it as much, but people are definitely using the swap thing. The swap, so. the swap's the biggest thing. Blackheart swap, all that jazz is is the big stuff for Rise and Fall. But that that shakes up the meta. I think swap uh, shakes up the meta quite a bit. It's yeah, in my opinion, a, like a lot. And swap's so. hard because like, do we discount most of the set except those two pieces that allow the swap? But you can't really discount 
most of those pieces because they're options for the swap. So it's like yeah, exactly you know, they're uh, in some parts they're integral, right? Like I would never just Exodus on a team. Oh no, with swap, oh, it's like yeah, there's pretty legit stuff you do with him. He's pretty yeah. gnarly. Um, because it changed, yeah. So. In, in that regard, for like the sets we've had this year, you know, Fantastic Four, Doom Chases completely changed the meta right there. You know what I mean? Just Doom Chases alone were huge. Um, Rise and Fall, or not Rise and Fall, excuse me, House of X. Agate was there. Agate was definitely there. Um, you know, and even then, it took him a while to really get into the it scene will, way yeah. more play. Kate Pride so, sees play now, but again, Pride, only yeah, because on the swap stuff. Yeah. Um, I think so, Jubilee is finally getting way more use now because of the swap. Like, right. I think again, um, like, that's that's ma- the majority of that set. Even Maggot now is like a sideline for swap piece. Oh, geez, like, is you know, he? oh, you don't have to play it on board. You can just have it sidelined. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, then there's that. Like, So, like, it's just kind of the way it goes right not every set is this huge huge shakeup. i don't think rise and fall was a big big shakeup, you no know? and i don't think empire is a big shakeup. i think it has figures that can add to existing teams i don't think it is like rise and fall or wonder woman where it's like oh this changes the landscape of how teams are being built right now and also it's pretty soon honestly it come to that conclusion the set just came out you know this is all gut reaction by looking at what the figures do you know i didn't you know in my puny little hero clicks brain put together how the wonder woman lasso shifting focus stuff would work you know with all the jlu stuff like i didn't put that together i saw other people play it i'm like oh okay that's pretty crazy you know so there might be some pretty crazy stuff in empire that i'm not seeing you know i think 400 silver is going to be fun for mission points or whatever, just 400 in general oh, yeah. will be fun with the Ultrons. <laughs> Ultrons, um, yeah. But, like, bes- outside of that, like, I don't see Cap. Like, Cap doesn't... It's not good. Like, his Avenger swap isn't good because you can't swap out Cap. Let's be real. You Like, in a meta thing, that 100 points isn't amazing. It's super awesome casual dial. I love that dial, don't get me wrong. Like, 100-point dial, even that 40-point dial, is not what you want, not in today's meta. So, like, that cap isn't... I can't imagine he's going to see a lot of play for Avengers swap. You know what I mean? So, like, there's there's not a ton that changes the landscape. And once again, this is just first-glance opinion, having not literally not played a single figure from this set. I think more so than figures in the set, but the changes Empire makes to charge, running shot, a uh, handful of other powers, um, that's right. the, bigger, actually... the bigger thing. That'll actually impact it. Um, that could have that could have came with any set. To go know? along with this, uh, the Eternals movie, even though this was designed, I who knows when it was designed before uh, Wonder Woman at the very least. Um, the Eternals movie, I think we're both in agreement that unless Sprite somehow <laughs> becomes really important and gets used, there's not a single thing in the Eternals in Eternals movie set that we'll probably see any kind of real competitive meta play. Um, Unimind probably being the, like the only thing that would even have a chance, and it's kind of overcosted. And by a kind of overcosted, I mean 150 points for six clicks is not amazing when you end on a 15 defense. Like, um, but yeah, like so we can kind of write off like whole sets like the Eternals movie. Uh, and then we can kind of jokingly write off stuff like uh, House of X, where like House of X, most of that stuff would never like outside of Maggot. Maggot got a lot of good play. Outside of that, that the rest of that set almost wouldn't have been usable at all until Rise and Fall dropped those swap pieces in. And now that whole set is oh, like, yeah. an option to pull from. I guess Bishop right. Prime was in there too. Bish- yeah, I don't know yeah. about Bishop, but. Again, I'm just generalizing. um, But uh, Bishop was good for a while, but then the existence of Guy Tyrant, Flash, Guy Gardner, like whatever else, Wonder Woman was like, "Uh, bro, I don't need to shoot you. (laughs) I'm going to approach you instead. Yeah, you don't even want to make a bystander when that's an option they have. And again, the very next set made a piece that says, like, you can't generate bystanders if you have more pieces on your force than mine. 
So like, yeah, there's always like counters that constantly come out and stuff. Do you think that this kind of toned down, I, I don't even know what to call it really. Um, Cause it's not really a toning down, but do you, do you think that this is something whiz kids is doing on purpose where they don't yeah. want to shift up the meta? They don't want like a set to be completely filled to the brim with all these like crazy pieces that just, you know, I can no longer start, like I can no longer play with anything made before empire because every single piece is just a real banger that is just like absolutely worth its points 10 times more than everything else you know like whatever the case may be um if everything in this set was like the ultron pim of this set do you think that 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 whiz kids does that on purpose where they they've kind of hemmed and hawed and like made some of the pieces maybe worse not necessarily worse but just not as good so that like they're not just stuffing sets full of meta potential no maybe i i like this set design more because empire i'm excited to play it casually because it has figures i care about and it has um fun mechanics like that captain america is just a fun casual dial like i said before the ultrons are just a fun way to win with mission points you know um and they're not crazy great they're a little over costed it's i i prefer Honestly, you need all the chases, right? They're they're kind of bland. They're kind of boring with what they do, but they're just neat versions of characters that are big and beefy. Like that Thanos is real bad, but like I still want to play him. Yeah, you know. So like casually, it makes me feel like you know if we're all kind of playing these sort of bad figures. I'm kind of having more fun. So I kind of you know because I, I really don't care about competitive at all. I, I only play it because that's when people show up to tournaments. Sadly. You know, so I prefer this being on a, a casual hero clicks night. I I like this set more so for weekly casual play. Yeah, this um, is a, a van set a rise and fall van a Wonder Woman. You no, know? oh yeah, this is definitely a set. You know, uh, bar the X Men, um, I, I will kind of want to play through a lot of the figures in the, the and maybe like Hulkling and like the weird people that I don't really care about. But yeah, um, yeah, Venom X Men especially get get out of here, Tra- trash, trash. Um, in trash. Uh, so yeah, like I, I really do. I really do like this set for casual play. It's a very casual set. I hope, you know, part of me in my heart of hearts hopes that this is what like uh, the Disney Plus set is going to be, where it's like just kind of solid casual figures that have fun mechanics, you know, because um, that would be really cool. Yeah, I, I just, I just want figures that I feel that I can, that I feel like I can play casually every week. Because that's where I'll get the most enjoyment out of them anyways. That's where I get the most enjoyment out of HeroClix, period. Just casually every week. So not maybe not that it's toned down. And it definitely is toned down compared to Wonder Woman. Empire is. Oh, yeah. But the I would say... casual fun of it is way, way high up. You know, simple dials. You know, Scott Porter was a little disappointed with how simple G-Hulk styles and a few of the other, like... Ghost Riders or whatever, but they are they are simple dials. They're very simplistic. That can be a bummer, especially if you really like those characters, which can suck. But at the end of the day, I think they're just really fun, casual night dials that I could play weekly, and no one's going to be like, oh, that's a fun foul or whatever, you know? So I, I appreciate a set like this, and I think if you go back a few podcasts, this is not, this was not my opinion on empire at all either i've i've really done a pretty big swing i think for my thoughts on empire but um i at the end of the day i think it's a really fun casual play set and that is worth you know two in the hand where it's one in the bush for if it's got a couple competitive figures in it you know right when it comes to like um so it's kind of like a there's multiple parts to this question or this yeah topic there is um for one, I think that WizKids, they don't have the same exact people design every single set. And then again, these sets are being designed kind of like years out. So there might be a mechanic that somebody puts in one set and they're like, hey, we're going to start doing this mechanic. And so whoever designs the next set puts that mechanic in, but doesn't really like dial it in as well as like a previous set or something. Um, I think so I, that's one part. I don't think it's always the same designer and that might be why we see varying power levels and like stats and point costs and stuff between 
these sets that come out relatively soon after each other kind of thing. Uh, and then the other thing is, like, I hate to think that WizKids has such a concise knowledge of what makes up the meta that they're able to, like, disrupt it or change it or add pieces that are specifically for the meta. Because, like, I, I do think that they could look at Ultron Pym and, like, Ultron and be like, these will be pieces that, like, might make it into the meta. I think that they can do that. Um, I think... So going back a couple of years, Sheriff Strange, who was supposed to kind of be like a end to ID cards, not really an end, but just something to kind of like rein him in. Right. Was, he was used on very few teams that I remember. It was most of the time it was like more of a nuisance than anything. And people would just kind of get around him like or they just try and take him out with like one big shot kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, it, I think that when WizKids tries to do something that is, like, specifically for the meta play, for, like, the competitive kind of scene, when they try and make certain figures explicitly for that, I don't know if it always hits. And so I don't I don't think WizKids quite knows, like, what is going to end up being competitive out of their sets. I think they definitely know when they release, like, a Retaliator or... Or like a 30 point you know molecule man they had to have known 30 point like molecule man was going to be good they made him unique i think that's like a pretty pretty good nod that they're like this will be like a good piece but you know oh, yeah, i think so there's other stuff there's like this um the unique scarlet witch in this set she's a rare uh she's unique because she has a like a rally die that can uh, replace a opposing attack roll with a one. So if you had multiples of her, it really wouldn't matter because you can only give one of them a rally die unless you're just rolling a ton of ones and able to do it. But because Moira can like power action give her one, maybe it made sense for them to make her unique. You know, I could see some teams having like a double Scarlet Witch and like Moira giving them. Uh, rally dies so that they you can force your opponent to essentially roll a like crit miss every now and then uh, but like that's yeah. something where i'm like did whiz kids think this would be competitive like would a 50 point scarlet witch that's outwit prob tk and has a rally die did they think that like multiples of those would be competitive because that'd be a third of your build using two of them well, just to make yeah. your opponent like crit miss once kind of thing or like you know just just to make your opponent like miss and you know um i think that sometimes they they hit the mark i think they like they really understand it in a, in some cases and then sometimes i feel like they really underestimate what like the the meta community in this game is capable of as far as builds go and just like how destructive certain things can be Kind of like when they when they designed, you know, I've talked about it multiple times, but Galactus's top dial, um, when they designed that, they clearly weren't thinking this would be something that can take on like a 300 modern team because it can't. Like it just, I can't, what is it, like 750 points and it's just like not good enough to take on a 300 modern competitive build. Uh, it would just yeah. get trounced like every single time. Um, and so, yeah, it's, are they designing it for people who really enjoy the game and want flavorful dials? Are they trying to rein in some meta? Are they doing a little bit of both? I think at most what they're doing is maybe trying to slip some like meta pieces into each set. Um, and I don't think it's like a always like a conscious thing. I don't think it's always, oh, we've only got two pieces that are meta in this set. You better make Magneto's attack like a 13 instead of a 12. You know, I don't think that's the case. I think it's, you know, they design these figures. If one ends up being like some really interesting piece, like Koya, for instance, for instance, I think Koya is a great design piece. I think Koya even could be competitive if WizKids hadn't been spending the last couple of years and last couple of sets trying to speed up the game. Because Koya will never get to, like, turn 6 or turn 8 to do, like, the really cool, impressive things on his trait. Um, most games don't last to turn 6 or turn 8. They're very quick games. They're over, 
by like turn three or four sometimes. And if they're not, then, you know, sometimes it's just you're being like slow played or like both players are just kind of taking it really slow and like barriering in. And in that case, like it's possible for him to get that kind of like get the higher amount, but that's not really his specialty. He's a close combat piece, you know? Um, but that's, that's like a situation where I think that is a piece that they definitely wanted to kind of make competitive and it just kind of missed the mark. And I assume in cases like this, it's because WizKids is just afraid, you know, if it was, um, like, if each of his markers were halved. So if it was on, like, the first marker, he could make his bystander, and then after two markers, uh, they got the plus one attack and defense, and then three markers, he could use regeneration this turn, and then four markers you dealt. Like, if it was that, I think this piece would have been something interesting. Um but now it's just a cool, it's a cool casual piece. Like I'm going to play this at 200 points as soon as I get one because it's, he's kind of like a big beefy dude that spits out a constant supply of bystanders, which is really fun. I mean, max four, whatever, but you yeah. get what I mean. Like I, I think that WizKids tries to make some stuff competitive, but I think that sometimes they miss the mark just because the meta is it's always shifting so it's hard for them to pin it down two years ahead of time even or i don't think they make the sets two years ahead of time but like a year ahead of time i think it's hard for them to pin down what like where the metal will be um because yeah it's like us as the players are the ones constantly breaking the game and kind of shifting stuff up i think so i mean at the end of the day it comes down to um weird mind of players and team building and like what they can see because i feel like these kids obviously nobody should know more about how the game works than whiz kids but at the same time um players look at it with such a different perspective that there are things and combinations that whiz kids probably didn't even think about like at all i guarantee they didn't think about um until it gets in the player's hands because then it comes from having a crew of and this is going to be generous here 10 to 15 people working on something and they all have that collective, they have their own different viewpoints. But then once you give it to, again, being generous, 3,000 people, 4,000 people, uh, there's a ton of different, you know, um, ideas and things going around. The the quote-unquote hive mind um, of people is, is so much more. And they all, all have these different, you know, relatively different views on how things should work. And there are people that are like, want to try to get it as busted as possible. There's all sorts of stuff. Once you look at it in that way with people that have crazy knowledge of the past, golden age, silver age, you know, can think about everything in modern. Cause some people can just look at a figure and they're like, Oh dude, I remember a mechanic from a Star Trek figure that we all thought was garbage. But since this figure exists now, they're good. And it's like, how do you know about that figure? No one played those. What is wrong with, you know what I mean? Like, there are the things that you can do as a community is so much more than what you can do as a design team. So, and obviously time passes when, okay, time passes. I, that felt so stupid when I said that, goodness gracious. Um, but from sets conception to release, um, different sets are obviously kind of time kind of do be passing though. Um, things are, things are, you know, constantly changing. So look at Eternals, for example, right? And that was originally supposed to come out as way different. Totally different landscape when that was originally supposed to come out. Some of those figures have been good when they originally came out. I don't know. I don't know when it was really going to come out. I don't think many of them would have been good. Um, but also, I'm looking at them under a different lens. My glasses are tinted a different color. They're Swap and Sky Tyrant tinted right now. So I don't, you know, I don't take that as those being the only two things I think are good. They're not. It's just what came to mind. So, like... Yeah, you know, the, you're looking at the them under a different of, lens. Um, an alpha strike costing you, like points wise, costing you like 50 points now. Right. Um, and that's like, you know, a, a flash with a TK. And that's like two figures, 50 points, like can yeah. pretty much get across the board. And I mean, might not be the best alpha, but I mean, as car, as far as like tournament reports show, like, you know, flash has been there. It's been doing stuff. Um, Pretty good. Pretty good. When you, when you look at that and then you look at, you know, a hundred point figure, that's four clicks long. It's real hard to be like, that's 
that's an amazing piece, you know. And that's another reason why I think we discount some of these like right off the bat is because you you can look at it and be like, what does this bring to the table? Oh, this is just kind of like another ranged attacker. Yeah, it's got like a little bit of flavor, but nothing like nothing new, nothing interesting, nothing that catches my eye. And then yeah, you you're always in the back of your mind like, ah, oh, a sky tyrant could kill us in one hit. Yeah, I guess I don't <laughs> yeah, ever want to play this competitively. Like you know that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, just to wrap this up, I do want to read some of the other comments that were sure. made on this post because I haven't read them yet. So I'm gonna I'm I'll have to self censure myself if I'm as I'm reading. Uh, but yeah, just to bring it back in. I do want to revisit the the main post. So, uh, let's see. Go with... uh, Let's see. According to the podcast, nothing has really made an impact on the meta of Heroclix so far, and I think it's for the best. Encouraging more variety. And he said, let me... Or they said, let me know what you guys think. Um, So, essentially, like, the post was kind of asking... Does everyone think that WizKids is forcefully, like, not really forcefully, but with a, uh, let's say, like, a purpose, WizKids is shifting figures away from, like, meta. That's essentially what the post was asking. So, L. Chanis 89 responded and said, No, in terms of meta diversity, the game remains the same. Even if the build at the top changes over time, the amount of viable solutions to the meta is constant. The main issue is with new sets is how obscenely pushed the figures are compared to the old ones. The raw stat and consistency of the new figures from Woman to Woman 80 and beyond are far more superior than anything before it. Aside from equipments, resources, the vast majority of figures are completely outclassed, and since a given build has very little room for figures, I mean, sure, you could make a team of 30 10-point figures, but won't be competitive you will always end up facing the same figures over and over, especially now since there are so few new sets with the rebalanced stats and point cost. So I kind of agree with this because, yeah, like uh, the Flash, like we just mentioned, Flash, Sky Tyrant, uh, if you get into like competitive scene, you will see a lot of those same things over and over again. Just like when Vulture was a thing, you'd see that at like at least once at a tournament. Uh, when Unimind was still legal, you'd see that at least like once at every tournament. Um, but yeah, I I agree because I do think the meta diversity shifts where sometimes there will be like way more diversity and like way more options. Um, I think like back when was it the beginning of 2020 when it was like Immortal Hulk and Prime Batman and like people were running these unthemed teams not caring if they won map and just like kind of running like good stuff. And at that point it was kind of like you could run just like good stuff. And there was like plenty of good stuff to choose from. And it seems maybe just because those figures are older and people have kind of figured out how to, how to fight against those figures, how to play against those figures. It seems to me more shifted towards like the newer stuff again. Definitely. Cause it's, it's that whole like, Time. I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast or not, but it's it's about um, the amount of time of play that everybody's had to have with those figures because you know people were saying, "Oh man, Immortal Hulk's not good," and then you know a lot of people used him. You know, Lucas used him, whoever else, and like we're like, "No, nah, he is really good." But then after time kind of goes on, I you know after playing them a bunch, you kind of understand how to like rotate the dial and like get through them. You know, so like there are just certain figures that you after you play against enough times, they, they lose that, that factor of how that like good scary, they are, you know, how am I gonna you deal learn, with this? Yeah. You learn the counter, right? Even when Vulture was the thing, you're like, okay, I pack an ID card that grants barrier or has barrier or I barrier or I whatever, right? I can figure out eventually how to get to Vulture without him being able to alpha. And then I can get a swing on him. If you built your team, you have and you couldn't invest too much in it because once again that's a 60 point combo that you need to invest however many points so you don't die right away on the off chance you face them um, but like there's figures like that where you eventually learn how to prepare for them yeah. same thing right it's so, like if this were 
uh, Nationals, when ABPI came out like a week or two before Nationals in 2019 or whatever, uh, 2019, 2018, whatever it was, um, that was crazy because Mind was still popular, blah, 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 was still popular, right? And then it's like, oh, dude, here is Kobik. Here is the weird combination of double Black Panther chase, you know? Uh, here's all sorts of, you know, there was a bunch of stuff in ABPI that was good. You know, Thanos, you know, all that stuff where people just didn't know how to play against it because it was so new. Um, and I, even though I know we said in the podcast before that now with Rule 20 and whatever else, people are playing with the figures sooner, definitely, you know, quote unquote, playing with them, practicing with them. It's still different when you take it to a major event like that. It's it's wild. So there are some figures here that we're not seeing how they work. Could work better. There are some figures here that we think are necessarily good, and eventually it'll be like, ah, you know what? No, I understand how to beat this figure. So it's not as you know bad yeah. anymore, not a problem. So it's, yeah. Well, and I, I feel like be... this was the first set that we've reviewed in uh, recent memory where we didn't even bother mentioning... Um spider-man family like keyword cheating because like that's still technically like i mean that's a thing still you know right. uh, yeah. like ruler and uh celebrity and yada yada like all those are still options but because those teams kind of have kind of like run their course like yeah, marvellas and i mean you'll you'll still see those occasionally but they're not as popular we didn't even really like mention it and it's just kind of you know there's a new hotness in town that you have to contend with. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the other comment, cool I'm not going to get into the comment chains that are on, but uh, the other comment by Ncrawler333, I'm guessing that stands for Nightcrawler. Just guessing. Um, maybe. Maybe. They say, I think there are less common, uncommon, and rare figures that are considered meta due to the new design philosophy and recent sets but there are still figures in each of the recent sets that are meta. Empire won't go in the, into this too much since it hasn't released yet, but the Prime T'Chaka and Super Air Wolverine are two obvious characters you'll see a lot. I don't know, so just because the Prime slot gets gets a lot of consideration if you're going to put a Prime on your team, um, T'Chaka might hit the right keywords, but I think with Black Leopard, Emperor Gladiator... Um, Q prime like there's a lot of primes to consider when you're choosing one even like bishop, yeah you can still consider bishop um i don't know if to is like a something that you'll see a lot but uh and then super rare wolverine i think is definitely you know with x-men swaps being as hot as they are i think that's definitely an option that'll be even if it gets fixed i think it'll be on teams uh they continue rise and fall i think there are I think the overabundance of Rally hurts the meta potential of this set, but there's still the Super Rare Primes, Emperor Gladiator, and Mimic, as well as Blackheart. This is one of the few sets where the chases weren't really designed with meta potential in mind. Yeah, that's pretty true. I think the chases do a lot, and so sometimes they're potentially meta because they they put so much flavor and effort into designing them but I don't think that they design them specifically to be meta most of the time, unless they give them like a 35 point dial that does the one real cool yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's fairly true where even like empire, the chases aren't really designed to be meta. Uh, wonder woman 80th using multiples of super rare flash is big right now, as well as some of the secret six chases chip makes animal themes viable chip makes a lot of stuff viable it's a yeah tk taxi for awesome taxi, real yeah. cheap and it can generate a lantern construct so chip just is similar to like magneto it's just a really good for the points piece and it'll probably make teams just because yeah. of that um future foundation molecule man is obviously great i'm not sure how much of an impact the doom chases have had but they were obviously designed to influence the meta. I think the Doom chases, just because of the sheer number of options they gave you, like you had, I mean, assuming you have the whole chase set, the sheer number of options the Doom chases gave you, I think WizKids had to have known that like one of these will be like real good. Somebody will like really want to play these because, you know, there will always be a great option to seeing what your opponent has on their team 
and being able to adjust your team afterwards. Like, that's just... It's an advantage. It just it always will be a good advantage to have, and Doom Chases do it very well. Uh, and then they continue House of X, probably the sets that the sets that least relevant in the meta right now for recent sets. Maggot is the figure I think that's used most often. So yeah, I think House of X is only relevant in the fact that Swap is relevant. Um, mm. But yeah, I can't think of like I can't think of a team that uses anything in House of X, maybe Animal with Maggot, but I can't think of anything else that would use House of X figures without using the swap mechanic as well. Because it's just, again, being able to see what your opponent's putting on the table and then adjust to like make your team deal with that better is just always a good option. And then Absolute Carnage, the chases, again, were obviously designed to influence the meta. I think, yeah, I think that one was probably so if whiz kids at this point doesn't know that keyword cheating and uh being able to like bring people over to like certain whatever keywords and like add a bunch of stuff if they don't understand that that can influence the meta and be competitive then yeah i don't think they're paying close attention but i i do think that whiz kids knew that when they were designing those chases and probably point costed them to be more competitive I think, you know, when 1776 started doing better than they wanted it to and they, they errated it, um, that was probably, you know, like a oof, went too far with that one kind of moment. But even Mary Jane generating paparazzi, Marvella being just a stupidly cheap character that can do so much. Yeah. Uh, the sheer amount of autonomous figures in that set, there's just like so much in that set that was pretty i wouldn't say like competitive or meta but it was designed for more competitive play like there wasn't a lot of like little niceties outside of like the common uncommon rare kind of areas oh no i agree like at uh the entire spider-man set is i think most sets just end up being higher rarity level because that's like you said the entire design is they make the higher rarity stuff or complicated yeah. or whatever, you know. Yeah, they. they I'm not like saying the, there isn't the more flavorful stuff is super rares and higher. Obviously, of like good things. I mean, just like you said, I mean, there's Jane, there's Marvella, there's Professor X, there's Magneto, there's blah 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 blah. You know. So, um, but yeah, no, I think I'm pretty. I think I said everything I want to say. This right. If you want to keep going through comments, though. No, that was so. That was oh, pretty much get, it. Uh, I'm not gonna do the okay. the comment chains. No, that was the uh, okay. I'm not gonna get through just there. More discussion. Thing. Yeah, right. and um, it's good discussion. I'm glad there's a lot of like, yeah. great discussion on this because you know that's what. Um, and this was the actually wanted it to be. Yeah, this was a topic that I, I didn't really think about when we were like recording or anything. You know, it's like nah, something really. I've thought about before. Like, does Wiz Kids, uh, like how what is their design philosophy kind of thing? Like that kind of question but it's not like a discussion that most people really want to have you know most people are more interested in like team building and sculpts and stuff like that which is fine but this is kind of like a more what makes up hero clicks kind of question and so it is a it is a fun question i did enjoy reading through the responses and like uh just the question itself but um yeah on a on a scale of Let's see. Ooh. Since this since this took place on Reddit, Reddit, we'll have to do a scale of uh, classic clicks, of course, being a zero, and r slash hero clicks being a ten. What would you? Uh, I can't put that as a ten. Um, yeah, that'll be our five. What would Let's... you rate this thread as? <laughs> now I'm trying to think. What's the best Reddit thread? None, because Reddit and Reddit's horrible, and I hate Reddit. Um. I am gonna put this it's so tough. It's it's a good thread that led to good discussion. That was you know even though a newer person made it, it doesn't fall to the faults that new people often make, which is not understanding anything at all. Like this guy has an understanding of what he thought and was able to formulate his own thoughts, opinions, ideas. Versus when new people are like, 
ask a question in a rules chat, it's like, a, can I have a pack at the table or something? You know, like it wasn't like a bad new person question. It was a very good thought provoking question and led to good discussion. So this is like, you know, an eight or something, which is r slash Stardust Crusaders clearly uh, on <laughs> thread it, Reddit threads. Um, yeah, that's what I'll that's what I'll give it on like a good day on like a part sixes op was released so like a good day for the thread the reddit oh okay. yeah probably just one of the best as as far as hero with reddit goes one of the best discussions we've had because otherwise it's just people like i'm not gonna name them but people you know even me i do this too i'm guilty of it but just like watch this hero clicks video check out my article oh, like sure. that's it's like the reddit is very much just used for spamming things yeah. i mean so is all the facebook groups but i just feel like we see more of it on reddit because yeah. there's not enough other discussion on reddit yeah, but yeah i think it's a solid eight on reddit is uh, like on this particular subreddit is uh kind of lacking which is why i was glad to see this um problem i think is like there's just there's a lot of people that look and don't comment or like don't mm. add to the discussion so like there's a lot of times where you'll see a post with like 10 or 12 or like whatever number of uh the up votes and zero comments and it's like i always like to if i'm gonna like take the time to look at something i always like to add like some sort of comment like i said i haven't been on in a while but no i'd rate this as a eye bleach have you been to that subreddit calder definitely not no uh, it's it's just like cute animals to uh, in case you've seen something like horrendous on the internet, which happens oh, a lot. You sure go thing. to r r slash eye bleach, uh, and it uh, quote unquote like cleans your eyes, your vision. Really, it's for your brain. I understand. You know. I understand. Yeah, right. yeah. I, did. Right. I sound really old talking about this website that has only been around since uh, I was in college. <laughs> So, Special ability to make Simeon sound incredibly yeah. old. I don't know uh, why talking about Reddit makes me sound like infinitely older than I am, but uh, it does. But that's enough of that. Uh, I thought it was interesting. That was good. Um, yeah, if you guys want to go to Reddit, I mean, that's your choice. I don't think there's a ton of content to be had there. I but... won't force you to go to Reddit. That's yeah, your choice. There is occasionally good content, though. Obviously, like we post on there occasionally, so obviously there's exactly, some good content exactly. that gets there. Um, I will say this: it tends to be less conversation, but more. Okay, I'll say less conversation, but also less cynical conversation than HC Realms. So, like, yeah. you, you don't get as much conversation, but you get like uh, there's less grouches. Con- yeah, it's way better than uh hc realms usually 100 percent. all right let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions there are dozens of us dozens uh let's go ahead polish ourselves off uh some questions from malcolm rush these are all about 2022 so thankfully this is before the end of the year show so we you know can save the reflections for the end of the year uh probably around next week's or next two weeks here we're gonna have to get out all of our questions for you guys to vote for next week's year end of the year you know top favorite figures worst figures uh best support best attackers all that stuff we're gonna probably start posting those today so there are should already be some up by the time you're hearing this uh but malcolm's got questions for reflection on 2022 uh which sets that whisk has announced so far are you looking forward to in 2022 and why so we have two sets coming out in 2022 that we know of and that's uh disney plus and war of the realms simeon uh what do you, are you looking forward to those? I am absolutely looking forward to the Disney Plus set. Uh, War of the Realms, just on its surface, looks, so far, looks way too close to um, the Mighty Thor set. Sure. And the Mighty Thor set did just, like, such an amazing job. That was, like, the first big Asgardian set that I was able to... P- like play with and buy into and stuff but that set did such a great job with like the scourge prime and uh, oh, destroyer yeah. odin like armor and like the chase set and all the equipments and just like everything about that set the super boosters everything about it was really cool really fun really thematic i thought it was all like pretty accurate to like the characters that they were doing and stuff like that i don't know what this set will do 
And I, again, I have War of the Realms uh, trade paperback. I need to read it, but I haven't read it yet. And so I don't know what this set will do that will distance itself enough from the Mighty Thor to like stand out on its own and be interesting. And so far, the sculpts that I've seen have not impressed me enough. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Um, I'm probably in the same boat, uh, unless there's some really cool Captain America stuff that I need to get, like how this last set has three very prominent Captain America-ish characters, so I just need to get them all, and two of them being chases means it was just easier for me to get case. Um, along with some fun gameplay figures, I would have never normally bought Ultron or whatever else, but I did for this set because they looked really cool. So, yeah, unless there's figures like that, I, um, can't say I'm dying for War of the Realms, but I am kind of dying in, in, you know, edge of my seat for Disney Plus, very much. I think we've talked at length about how excited we are for Disney Plus, so definitely don't need to go over that, but yeah. Yeah. Um, next up, what characters do you hope are going to be in those sets? So, we've already at length discussed what we want out of Disney Plus. Um, Yeah. It's hard to like really like recap all of that again, but you know we've talked about a good like Sam and Bucky, um, like good like Vision, Wanda, Agatha, like all that kind of stuff. All of the all of the stuff that's in the Disney Plus shows. Essentially, I just hope that it's not too much. What if and that we get enough flavor for like the other sets. Yeah. Uh, So that's pretty much like the recap for me on that one. As far as War of the Realms, I really... So I'm more hoping that I get an... Uh, not an ID card, jeez. Hey, you want ID cards back? What? <laughs> yeah. No, um, the <laughs> legacy cards. I'm hoping that we get a Thor Odinson title character uh, legacy Ooh. card. Because I love okay. that title character. But it was always like over costed to use. So I'd really that love for like a 125 point or like a 100 point, like one. Um, and if they didn't change any of the title abilities, like it's such a good sculpt. I'm really looking forward to which pieces they use. Maybe they'll bring, I doubt they do the old uh, frog thunder. The yeah, it's too rare. Chase. Yeah. I, yeah. I doubt they redo that one. But I think like maybe a super rare. I uh, might be out for blood if they bring back Unimind in any kind of capacity. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. You know, maybe Mangog will get his resurrection. Oh, don't, 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 don't. Why would you say that? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Uh, as far as actual figures, um, you know, we've got we've got a ton of stuff that from, like, the Thor kind of canon that hasn't been clicked in quite a while. We could get see the return of Doug. Um, resurrect Doug. Why are you the way that you are? Why do you keep saying these horrible things? Uh, let's see. Um, I can't remember the piece that I was gonna. Oh, uh, Gore the God Butcher. Um, oh yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. That's that'd be awesome to be in like a, a MCU at some point, kind of. Maybe I'm just thinking of like a some fanfic that I saw or something. But I thought I saw something about Gore the God Butcher making it to MCU someday. And that'd be like a really cool piece to get back in modern. I I hundred percent I hundred percent agree with that. That would be all in to get Gore the God Butcher back in modern. That'd be dope. What? Hmm. I'm trying to think like what are figures that would have to be in it to make me buy it? Definitely would have to have some more Captain America stuff. Uh, I think recently, I think last year or two years ago, they did this weird thing. This this wasn't War of the Realms, I don't think, but it was some kind of Phoenix Force thing where a lot of random different characters held the Phoenix Force, and notably one of them was Captain America. So, like, that would be really, really cool to get a Captain America with the Phoenix Force would be pretty, pretty sweet. I wasn't necessarily excited when he got the Phoenix Force because, like, it doesn't matter to me. I don't like the Phoenix Force. I don't really care about anything X-Men. But... Uh, I was like, okay, very cool, very cool, you know? So, like, that would just make... It had a cool design, so I'd be down to get that. Um, You would have to make an even better um, Last Laugh Scourge for me to be excited for this set. You would have to make one that's so much better than the last one, one that's just gnarly, you know? The last one was last already really good. so good, oh, like, it's so it's solid. It's like you put oh, down yeah, your, your, like, marker 
and you're just like, I'm going to hold my ground here. And yeah. I, uh, no, absolutely. Um, it's good. It's balling. But, um, you know, I'm not a big Thor like character person. So the legacy cards would be huge. A captain, a smoky foot cap legacy card. If they were all legacy cards from the mighty Thor, I'm uh, sorry, hammer of Thor, excuse me. That'd be really awesome. Like, I would love that. I would like it a lot. So we'll have to see. But um, that would be stuff that would make me more excited for uh, that Thor set. Um, however, I don't want it to lose its its thing. Like, if a Thor, you know, fan wants it to be a Thor-heavy set, by all means, it should be a Thor-heavy set, and I'll just skip it. You yeah. know, I would prefer it, it be been... a Thor-heavy set for good Thor fans than a everywhere set like how captain america was a punch to the gut for me you know i would prefer those fans be happy that they get a good as guardian themed set um and less so than it has stuff that i want in it i'm okay with skipping a set i yeah. especially when disney plus is coming out you know if they just want to rehash like all the thor stuff it has been over four years at this point so yeah it is like getting kind of overdue if they just want to you know like here's your malekith here's your classic loki Here's yeah. Agent Loki, you know, like all the, all the like Asgardian stuff that like there you need to catch us back up to. Here's some Stone Men of Saturn again, a couple rock trolls, an ice giant, we like, need them. you know, mm-hmm. ooh, some sideline ice giants would be fun, like the Sentinels. That would actually make uh, sense for them true. to have in cap. It's yeah. true. That would be cool. Actually, yeah, <laughs> that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next up. Uh, what sets do you hope Wizards make for 2022? So, uh, what sets do we want that haven't been announced for 2022? So this is sort of a make a set territory type deal, which we've kind of done before. I mean, I feel like we're going to say kind of sets that we want yeah. to come out. So but yeah, I go think for the it, easiest so. is it would be awesome if in 2022 WWE Wave Two was released. Um, it's the two. It's the only two missing from 2022. Uh, True. <laughs> uh, no, but that would be an obvious choice for me. Um, something I think, well, like Calder was just talking about, like when the, the Phoenix Force, all the Avengers were like vying for the Phoenix Force or it was like testing them or whatever. That'd be like an interesting set. I'd really like to get uh, an actual like redone comic edition of What If where, you know, we weren't pulling from in my opinion, like garbage storylines. And we actually like gave the characters like yeah. really flavorful stuff. I feel like what if had so much potential and with the Disney plus one, um, like getting some of the, what if characters, I think that might like, we might get a resurgence of that kind of stuff. Um, it's been a while since we've had any like real Marvel Knights kind of stuff. I'd be really cool with like midnight yeah. suns, that kind of thing. And then DC wise, I don't man, I don't even know what DC's doing. I still want like a doomsday clock set, get some like watchmen kind of stuff going on too. But yeah, just you know, I just don't want another Spider Man set right away. I don't want mm-hmm. another X heavy set. Uh at this point, I don't even really want another Fantastic Four set because we've like the main Fantastic Four I now have I think like six versions of each at the minimum. Yeah. I uh, I agree with you. I if I want any more sets, I really want MCU sets. I hope this WizKids. I don't know if they pitched it this way or if Marvel was like, we gotta push Disney Plus, whatever. I hope they try again and they'd be like, hey, let's do a twelve year whatever you know cool legacy set for the MCU. Let's do stuff from you know from two thousand eight to now from the main movies. I would absolutely love that in a big booster set if they can do it with Disney Plus. Hopefully they can do it with the rest of the MCU. You know what I mean? So, like, that's that's what I'm really, really hoping for. That's what I want from Marvel. From DC, it would, once again, it would be a Lantern set. I've, I don't know how many times I have to give uh, WizKids this freaking awesome set idea, but I want a Super Booster Lantern set. Super Booster or um, not-so-Super Booster, where it's the four figures and then one big figure. Uh, I would love that. I would love that a lot. Um, where it's like giant construct vehicles, giant, you know, actual characters that are just giants from DC, from the DC Lanterns that are also just really big. Um, that would be really, really cool. Uh, I want a lantern set. I think everybody wants a lantern set really badly, uh, especially after the chases. So give us a lantern set, please. Give us a lantern set, please. Um, those would be the two sets that I would want, though. And then his next question is what characters you want to see in those sets? Yeah. Uh, so. 
we've already gotten a couple in Empire as far as like comic book what if sets, but like the the what if Wolverine like joined Shield mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, but there's like so many really interesting non venomized kind of characters if you just like stay away from the venom ones and you just look at like the really interesting uh covers and stuff there's some really cool like moon knight ones and stuff like that and then as far as like doomsday clock you know it would just reassembling the cast of the watchmen would be really cool it doesn't even necessarily have to like be super comic accurate to like the newer stuff but Mm. you know if you just want to do like some throwback figures get like the comedian again get some Rorschach Worcestershire sauce uh, mask again Um, the owl is that his name I think you're right that's correct yeah yeah. and uh, the uh, Osborneus guy the the bad guy right yeah he's got a business yeah. osborne, osborne tower yeah. yeah it sounds right yeah because yeah. they yeah because they called him uh can't remember i think they called osborne, him yes. Sabbath. it was his uh villain mm, name. Yeah. but yeah uh get all those characters back and uh i think i'd be good with most of that like again my biggest thing is i just don't want to see sets full of stuff that i already have plenty of uh, I'm fine with having multiple figures, multiple versions of figures, but what I'm not okay with is having, you know, generic Spider-Man in his blue and red with in cap again, or you know that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it'd be super boring. Um, for the Lantern set, I've once again spoke at length about the stuff I want. I want like Guy Gardner and a Dodge Charger Mustang or monster truck or whatever. I want Hal Jordan with like a construct or a Hal Jordan with a normal airplane jet thing, right? That'd be cool. I want Kyle Rayner and his big stupid anime mech. Um, I want Jon Stewart with maybe like a crane, something, you know, that could be on a two by two, something big, some big cool construct, you know, something like that. Be really neat. Um, I obviously I want more constructs. I would love a chase uh, pink or star sapphire and red lantern guy Gardner when he saves the lantern core for like the third time because he's the best lantern. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, that'd be really cool. I want uh, Kyle Rayner's girlfriend in a fridge special Jeez. object. Oh. That would be- <laughs> Sorry, uh, I had to. I had to. Um, it's funny. I'm gonna send um, this episode to Gail Simone and. Then we're yeah, never getting product from WizKids. Oh, she'll like it. She'll like it. Or she'll be like, is that gimmick infringement? Are you stealing my thing? <laughs> Clearly no one else can say the word fridged like that ever. Only only I, Scale Simone, can do such a thing. Anyway, no. Anyways, uh, those would be characters I want to see in the Lantern set. Not for sure. Um, once again, an expansion of the constructs. Some cool Red Lantern constructs, Green Lantern constructs. You know, all the core constructs. Let's see some more of them. be really dope. Um, yeah, I think that'd be awesome. And I think for, like, a Marvel MCU set, uh, characters we've never had the chance in the MCU, like, to be made in movies. Like, no one wants the freaking Eternals. I'm sorry, WizKids. Nobody wants these. I I don't know what Marvel is, like, trying to get you to make, but I want to see a Mark I Iron Man armor so bad. I want to see uh, a Mark II War Machine so bad like the iron man 2 type war machine i want to see a justin hammer i want an iron monger um that's just iron man i want thor ragnarok thor i want infinity war fickle thor you know what i mean i want korg i want meek i want captain america with the hammer and the broken shield i want an mcu thanos we all want an mcu thanos we want an mcu spider-man dr strange wong uh characters that were never made in the mcu uh Uh, some filler characters from black panther whiplash yeah, I would take that. I want to recreate my favorite movie, The Wrestler, in Hero Clicks form. Um, yeah. So get me Aunt May. We need Aunt May as well. Then we can rec- oh, we recreate, we recreate The Wrestler. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I want a vulture. Think how dope vulture would look, man. How cool would that sculpt be? Stereo. Oh, yeah. That'd be a cool sculpt, Absolutely. too. Yeah, yeah, I want drone. Mysterio can easily be like a, a swappable figure, like a like a combination of flock of bats uh plus alter ego I have to see it that'd be dope man 
in tor- yeah like i think you know obviously an mcu set would be absolutely amazing so peggy carter pretty cool you know like all sorts of stuff so yeah those that's what i would want in those in those sets um except is which heroes cons uh convention exclusives uh do you want whiskets to make for 2022 this is make, so not release, all right? We already know there's handfuls of figures that they haven't released. Um, this is what we want them to make. So I, I'm always the sucker for the two-by-twos and bigger. Um, and so, like, that being said, getting, like, a new Giganto the Mole Monster or a Celestial or, like, anything that's, like, one of those big dudes, like a big doohickey thing, kind of like... Um, Galactus, but bigger. Uh, Master Mold was cool. I didn't like the way Master Mold got released at all, but I really liked the style and everything when we first saw it. Um, But yeah, I I actually, you know, Master Mold's a bit small. I'd like to get those like taller, you know, whatever figures that kind of double as statues and have decent like play purposes too. Um, Something like that. And then so normally if a convention is a, a convention figure is made it's because it doesn't really fit in a set so something that I think would be cool to get that might not be made in a set man um, we should get like Henry Cavill like some Henry Cavill properties <sighs> so uh, I think he plays. Oh gosh, shut up. Girls, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. A small series. Shut up. Season two is coming out called <sighs> The Witcher. Uh, and you could even make Cirilla and, you know, Yennefer and Roach. Gwent, the horse. Mission point ability. Yes. No, Gwent is like a title character. Gwent is maybe. a title character thing where you yeah. can stop one of your opponents, whatever like they're doing, and they can't attack until they play you in a hand of Gwent have to get out two decks of a separate game apply your opponent with a game they have zero clue how to play <laughs> in, in order to win a game of hero clicks yeah that sounds all that sounds great i love it um yikes dude uh of course we got that witch yeah to get the witcher in there somehow i it's been a while it's been over a year oh not since you've done witcher but it's we've been on this you have been on this not me you have been on this bring up Witcher thing for over a year now. <laughs> it's painful. It's so painful. I don't even have any knowledge of Witcher aside from what you have told me about it. I have played zero games, watched zero shows, and it's gonna stay that way. Um just out of anyways. spite. Out of spite. Oh yeah. Oh Simeon. You know me. I do many things. Many <laughs> things. <laughs> out of spite. Um but convention exclusive figures do I want WizKids to make? I uh, I really don't know, honestly, if I'm being completely truthful with you. Um, like, I didn't foresee them making Ultimate Warrior, and I was like, yo, that's awesome. Like, that got me crazy hyped and excited. Um, I don't think he's slotted for Wave 2. I honestly forget what's in Wave 2, but a Rowdy Roddy Piper would be really, really cool. I, I think figures like that. Um, if we're talking wrestlers... I didn't expect to be made in Heroclix. That'd be awesome. Uh, that'd be really cool. A any any wrestler would obviously be awesome, but I think Roddy Piper is the first one that just popped into my brain. There, oh, dude, if we got New Jack, they would never they would never give us New Jack. But I don't know why my brain went to that. But that would be hilarious. Um, well, does we've already quadruple got, damage. We've already got object. Ronda Rousey. So do you really need two versions? <laughs> Okay, dang. All right. Um, the rowdy. Dang, Simeon. What what did she go by? Yeah, really. Yeah, she was the rowdy Ronda Rousey, but Rob, she is rowdy nothing. Rousey. She's nothing, yeah. nothing compared to Roddy Piper. I mean, she is a bleak underwear. Well, smear because compared because it, to Roddy it wasn't Piper. the perform. So I okay. I almost said it wasn't the performance. It wasn't like the athletic ability that was a problem. It was the character building and yeah. like the driving the crowd wild and stuff like that. Turns like, out Rowdy like was like, it's important to have personality when you wrestle. Yeah. He was like, yeah. you know, you have to be interesting. Yeah. 
that was the problem. Anyways, you know, figures that would be really neat for convention exclusives are just like, whatever, man. I don't know what, I really don't know what I want. I genuinely don't know. Whatever they end up giving me, I'll be like, oh, cool. Or, oh, I don't care. Like, everybody went nuts for Ghost Rider and Thanos, and I was like, oh, I don't care. You know, like, I didn't care. So, it's just the way it is. Uh, next up, what is your prediction for Hero Clicks in 2022? I think it'll it's still a great question for Simeon to answer. It'll still be here. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I don't. I don't think I see like a big change coming to HeroClix. Um, oh. If you wanted me to guess like new mechanics or anything like that, like I never would have guessed that rally would have been a thing. Uh, prior to that, mission points never would have like. I wanted something like mission points, but I never would have guessed that they would have implemented the way they did. Um, and like plot points and plot character or not plot characters but title characters that's something i never would have predicted so honestly i don't know but i do like all those changes i do like all the things i didn't like the rollout of rally dice but i do like that it's a new mechanic uh um, yeah so if i was going to predict anything i would say uh let's see I think resources and possessors come back uh, and then worlds and Shut nationals up. come back, and we'll have legacy cards for ID cards. Those are my predictions. Shut up! Shut up! So you'll need a legacy card for your level seven ID card, and then you'll be able to call in anyone with the shield keyword. Thank you, Simeon. Thank you very much. Um, Here's what I think, community-wise, what is going to happen in Hero Clicks of 2022. I I hope Disney Plus set isn't too late and that that gets a lot of people into the game. I really, genuinely hope that gets a lot of people into the game. WizKids is seemingly trying to get people into the game. Seemingly. So I hope things they are doing work and the community grows. I think, personally, the community has stagnated a lot. Um... I think it's been on the downhill trend since 2017, probably, honestly. Um, uh, maybe 2018, I don't know. But I, I feel like whiz, I feel like people hate to say this, um, so I'm not going to put it in those words necessarily. I'm not even going to say them. But I do think Heroclix is on a downward trend, and I think WizKids needs to start caring more about it. They are giving products to people that don't play Heroclix to try to get to other audiences, and as much as it irks me, it makes more sense to give products to those people to try to get new players in versus you would want to give that product to people that are big in the Heroclix community, so that way that's for Heroclix players. So with this last rollout, you know, it was very much just Scott Porter, just whatever. They're doing some, you know, clickbaity thumbnails they're trying to do. They're trying to plug it on social media. They're looking for a new social media person, hopefully to plug Heroclix more, but I know Heroclix is not their cash cow. I just want to see the game grow, and I think it might grow. Depending on the set choices for 2022, Heroclix might grow, because I'm tired of walking into comic shops in different areas, you know, like when I travel, and and I go, do you guys have any Heroclix? And they're like, oh, no, that game's dead. And I'm like, it's not dead. It's holding on. No one's pulled the plug it's on it yet. It's, it's there. It's real to me. Yeah. I say, yeah. Heroclix not dead. It's surely alive. It's living on the inside. It's roaring like a lion. And then I'm going to make four movies about oh, Heroclix is not dead. That was a reference <laughs> for people that might get it. If they don't, they don't. Uh, so yeah, Sounds I hope like it will grow. I think it, bad Christmas it, movie. Uh, uh, it's not Christmas. So you're halfway there. Uh, speaking of movies, Simeon, what movies, TV shows, albums, <laughs> albums are you excited for in 2022? Uh, the new Judas Priest album is coming out, and I'm oh, nice. no, I have no idea. So I, I could say what movies, TV shows I'm like looking forward to currently, but those are releasing in 2021. So, uh, <clears throat> Matrix Resurrections, um, The King's Man looks pretty fun. Okay. Uh, Morbius looks, is it Morbius? Yeah, Morbius, the Living Vampire, whatever, uh, looks really good. Um, because I had to see a, I had to see a trailer for that one. I could not shunt my eyes away from the theater screen. Uh, mm. Thought about it, didn't want to look like a weirdo. So, uh, plus, I feel like if you're like cowering from a, uh, 
a trailer for a vampire <laughs> in a Marvel theater. movie, people either think that like you're terrified of vampires or maybe you are one. And so hey, uh, this dude's a wuss. Like, I just don't want to see is spoilers. He is he hiding? Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, movies, TV shows, stuff I'd like to see moving forward. Uh, real glad that MCU is that, like still going strong, still making bangers. I don't know if we'll ever reach the same high point that we have reached, but yeah. I think there's still plenty of quality stories left to be told. And Darn. I think Disney Plus is a really good avenue for, as much as I hate Disney being like our overlord, um, one of the many, I do appreciate that I now get series versions where rather than trying to tell me a whole story in like two hours, F. they can break it into like eight episodes or 10 episodes, you know, whatever. I really like that. And they've done a good job so far, I believe. Um, but yeah, those are like things that I'm still excited for. Um, I can't say anything on like the DC side because Man, to be excited like for, where obviously. are we at like is the snyder verse still like a thing is there like a coherent <sighs> dc universe that's still together like what is i have no idea um but yeah those are the things that i'm looking forward to not a lot i mostly watch stuff like quite a while after it comes out marvel movies are the only thing i really go to the theater for usually and that's usually just because I try and avoid spoilers and then see it soon enough that I can spoil it for other people. I'm gonna be gone. Oops, scumbag. Yeah. Um, yeah, as far as, like, TV shows, movies, and albums go, I can't think of anything besides if Multiverse of Madness is coming out next year. I'm excited for that. That would be really about it. I don't think I've ever cared once in my entire life about an album release. Sorry. Um, wow. But video games, I'm dying. I am dying to play Evil Dead. I am so hyped for Evil Dead to come out. I am incredibly excited. I have not been this excited for a video game to come out since Doom Eternal. It's been almost two years now, which uh, I'm very excited for Evil Dead to come out. That is my most hyped thing, non hero clicks related, 2022, and it is, it is Evil Dead the game to come out. I am pumped. Uh, Malcolm then asks, how likely are you to go to any comic cons, you know, anime conventions, comic conventions, whatever, in 2022? And if so, which ones? Um, I would say pretty likely to go to, like, at least one. Uh, fairly likely to go to at least two. And then yeah. it kind of, you know, trends downward after that. They just, it's a pretty big time commitment for me, for some of them. But um, I'd really like to go back down to Planet Comic Con, which is in Kansas City. It's not too far away, and they they host a pretty decent con. It's not too bad. The last couple times I've gone, and then of course, Thanks. whichever ones actually end up being in Omaha, I will probably end up going to as well, um, or close to Omaha because I guess you, yeah, that's Council, we Bluffs. To Council Bluffs. Ugh. I really, I honestly, I won't talk about it here. But I got problems with that convention. I have big problems with that. Anyways, um. I, I'm relatively the same as Simeon. I mean, I'm going to go to a convention uh, January 13th through the 16th. So if you live in Charlotte, North Carolina, I'll be going to Ichiban Con. That's a convention me and my brother enjoy going to. Uh, we went to it in 2020 for the first time, and now we're going to go to it again when it's finally happening again. So I'm going to try to go to as, you know, as many as I can. I'm not going to be like, yeah, I'm going to drive five hours to then go. Like, if it works for me to go, I'll go. You know, I, I want to go back down to Arizona for a convention really badly. I want to... Uh, compete again at Supercon. This year was great uh, competing at Supercon. It was really fun. I want to compete at Nebraskon. Um, but Council Bluffs sucked. Uh, it was absolutely garbage. The venue was garbage. It didn't feel good. Um, people were like, dude, it's so great that Nebcon isn't at a hotel anymore. It feels less like a frat party. And I'm like, that was the whole point. That's what made it, that was, was, that's what made it fun. That was, that was the, the good part the of Nebraskon. Yeah. That was the yeah. uniqueness that it brought to the whole thing. So I I want frat party Nebcon to come back as soon as possible. I don't even do frat party things. I just enjoy the atmosphere. Um, and I was just like, bro, this convention was soulless. It was lifeless at an actual convention center. It sucked. Um, so yeah. So definitely at least three or four at the very least. But then 
that's about all I go to anyway, anyways, you know, so I think I'm going to go to my normal amount of conventions. Um, yeah. And that is, I believe, uh, yeah, that is all that Malcolm has. So he says, uh, have a safe holiday and see you next year. I will try to have a safe holiday. We do normally have a stabbing contest for Christmas, so I will do my best to make sure it is safe, but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, and then we have some Discord questions, Simeon. I gotta scroll to. There it is. Yeah. Uh, hey, Bill asks, what do you think would be would have been played if there had been an actual Worlds and you were in attendance? Empire's legal for the purpose of this exercise. Well, we've seen kind of uh, through like the the unofficial Worlds, we've seen kind of what uh, would have been played at an actual Worlds. Uh, what I would have played... It's the only competitive team that I've built recently, and it's a Magneto swap team with, like, Hellfire stuff. So it's got Exodus on the sideline. It's got Gene on the sideline. So I can I can do the Gene Gray bomb thing. I can swap to that. I can swap to a double Blackheart with, like, Dark Phoenix and stuff like that. Um, Kate Pride starts on the map, so I at least get my Lockheed Bystander, but also... She does. She gives like people uh, steel energy and other options, which is great for Blackheart. Um, there's a lot of like moving parts on it, and none of them are great by themselves. But in like the right situation, you can kind of pick the right one. Um, I don't think that team kicks off quite as good as the X Men swap, which is surprising to me. I thought it would have been the other way around, but uh, I just don't think. I think. Uh, Blackheart being like the main kind of damage dealing piece. I think he ended up being easier for people to deal with than you would have expected or than I would have expected. But um, that's what I would have ended up playing. And then, of course, uh, as many battle royals as possible and team sealed if possible. Um, I I don't know what we're going to play it. Like Simeon said, I think it's going to be relatively the same about what was played. I mean, obviously, Empire was legal. I think we might have seen uh, some Wolverine on those swap teams with his jank shenanigans that oh, he yeah. does, definitely. Uh, and probably some Venom Rogue on those swap teams as well with her jank shenanigans. So I think all of that is very plausible to have been played at Worlds if Empire was legal for it, of course. Um, but after that, face value, you know, then Venom Magneto. It would probably just been those. Ew, gross. The three best figures from an Avengers Fantastic Four set are X-Men. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> moving on. Because obviously X-Men aren't good enough. So, yeah, what I would have played, you know, some years I phone it in for, like, Nationals or Worlds if I have the buy. Uh, I think one year I really wanted to play Lex Luthor, God of Apocalypse, and then two Groots <laughs> for a ruler-themed team. Nice. Um, and I was talked out of not playing it, and I still went, like, 0-5 or whatever, playing, like, a version of Sam Cap. I'm like, I should have just played this stupid Lex Luthor team. So I might... And then there were years for Nationals where I just... I had a buy. Like, I spent all day one day in Grinders to do it. And then when it finally came time for Nationals, I was like, eh, I don't feel like it. And then I just didn't play. So if, if depending if I would have felt like that, I probably still would have played, but I would have played, like, Ricky Barnes, Captain America, Thanos... Captain America or something like that, just all from Empire, just something funny. Yeah, and then I think played that. I made the I think it was the last so 2019 Nationals. I I placed high enough in Team Sealed that I qualified and didn't have to play Grinders. But I decided, even though I had the team with me, I decided not to play in Nationals and just like the 300 Modern, and I just played Battle Royals <laughs> instead. Which this was ABPI a fun set for Battle Royals. So dude. yeah. Also uh, that. Yeah, it was ABPI only a bad right. idea when they ran out of ABPI and we were stuck with uh Yeah, did, did you play was did you play Harley that Quinn? rebirth? It was rebirth. Rebirth, was yeah. Rebirth. Did you okay. play that rebirth battle royale with me or is it somebody else? I played a couple and oh, okay. they were disappointing to say the least. They were awful. I wanted to shoot myself. Rebirth is terrible for battle royals. It's rebirth is terrible. Like period. You can pull Sorry. so good, but if you don't, then you're stuck like, I hope my Robin can take down your Bizarro <laughs> or like, you know, your Lex Luthor at full points, that kind of thing.
Uh, Bill asks another question. It's kind of a fun question. He says, inspired by Discord discussion, pancakes or waffles? And then I will add, how do you like to eat both? Ooh. Uh, for me, it's waffles, 100%. Um, I just prefer, I prefer, like, the crispness over, like, pancakes tend to get soggy, tend to get, like, you know, a good pancake, I feel like isn't half as good as, like, a decent waffle. Um I also like the fact that waffles like catch the syrup or whatever you put on them. Oh, yeah, How I eat them, regardless of like you know either one, is like a healthy serving of peanut butter on top, and then uh, if it's a pancake and I'm on the go, sometimes I'll put peanut butter and then like roll it. Now I haven't had Ooh. either in quite a while, but like yeah, you just like roll it and it's like pancakes already kind of like a sweet bread, uh, so you add peanut butter and it's like fairly. Fairly sweet, but tastes really good. And then uh, waffles. Uh, I, I like peanut butter on waffles, but man, they're just so good at catching syrup. Sometimes I do both, which yeah. is a ton of yeah. sugar. Yeah, yikes. Uh, um, so I, I'm with you, Arthur, with you. I Waffles are my favorite um, over pancakes every day of the week. Um I normally, when it's like a family thing, like if it's Mother's Day, Father's Day, whatever, growing up, um, I was in charge of breakfast and I made waffles for breakfast. That, that was my pseudo specialty, I guess, was that I could make an uh, okay, passable waffle. And that's what I would normally do. So I, I like making waffles. I enjoy eating waffles. Um, when I was a kid growing up, my favorite thing, my favorite way to eat waffles was to have, you know, it would be like Eggo waffles, right? It's like what I would do for a snack. I would make an Eggo waffle, I would cover it in peanut butter, and then I would push chocolate chips. Every other row would be lined <laughs> a full row of chocolate chips. And then I would nuke that for about 15, 20 seconds to melt the chocolate chips a little bit, if they hadn't already melted with the warmth of the um, peanut butter slash waffle warmth. Naturally, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then I would eat it that, that way, which is probably, just probably why I was such a pudgy child growing up. That's um, why they had to make those Wilford disgusting. Brimley commercials for you specifically. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, waffles are, are great. I used to, pancakes, I used to cover them in butter, cover them in sugar, then roll them up and eat them like that. That okay. was what I how I liked to eat pancakes. As Have you ever kid. had like a pancake plain and like it's good? I can't, no, I don't think so. I mean, I've never had a plain good pancake. There's been, like, there's been times in my life where I've been like in too big of a hurry and all I have is like pancakes for whatever reason. And by Pancake. times, I mean like maybe this has happened twice in my entire life. Oh, um, yeah. But I'll just take like a pancake to go, you know, just like a pancake, no syrup, no butter. And, you know, if it's still like warm and fluffy and stuff, yeah, they've got like a little bit of like a sweetness to them and it's like a flatbread. It's good. It's not bad. Oh. I mean, it's yeah. it's essentially just like a bread, but... I uh, and then our last question is Luke Luke says, with all of this year's releases now behind us, so quick though, like as soon as Empire comes out, now that the releases are behind us, uh, but now that they are behind us, who's going to make the 2021 end of the year watch list? Uh, reminder, it was like, it was like Tri-Sentinel made the watch list last year, Iceman did, all kind of like that retail made watch list, 1776 made watch list, um, Black Widow famously made watch list and was quite changed quite a bit. Uh, Captain Marvel was on the watch list. Nothing happened to her. Remember what else is on the watch list? And I made a video about it. Uh, so, yeah. What do we uh, think is going to be Valeria. end of year watch list? Valeria, oh yeah. Valeria, Valeria and Venom Groot. Venom Groot. Yeah. Because the varied vines or whatever I, I said. Um, so, the obvious ones for me are... The two from this newest set, Wolverine and then uh, the Venom Rogue. Those those seem like those might actually be... I was going to say errated before the set drops, but I feel like those will be reined in sooner rather than later. Um, is there anything from X-Men Rise and Fall? Like, no. I don't think anything from there's like really going to need watch list. There's already been a couple erratas just to clean up wording on some of that stuff anyhow. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know because there's certain things like if at any point they decide that Magneto and Professor X are too oppressive, there's not really a good way to fix their 
uh, the swap ability without just completely nuking the figure. Um, unless they, they changed it, like if they could change it to the same wording as like cap so that you can't swap out either of them, that's still like... Even then, there's so much investment. less points yeah. than cap is, so... Yeah. Um, I, um, is there anything I'm missing? Like, man, I don't... I don't really think there's like anything left that I feel I like constantly have to like battle against. And it's just like overwhelming force kind of situation. I think I would like to see the Wonder Woman objects be, be changed. Definitely. I would like to see them where when you swap them out, you only swap to one each per game instead of this whole back and forth whatnot. So I would like that personally. I'd like that to be watch listed. I don't think it'll be on the watch list, but that'd be cool. Um, I wouldn't mind Flash being on the watch list a little bit, you know. No yeah. offense, Matt, George, Adam, but you know, you made you done made a good figure. That's how you should feel about that. That's, so that's more I wouldn't so mind them being on the watch I'm list. Just not shelling out the amount of money that one of them costs. Yeah, I ain't and, willing to pay uh, that. Winning teams are like playing four sometimes, and I'm like, well, not that I would like copy that strategy, but it's like that. I mean, as a whole, that seems bad for the community when. You need, I mean, don't need, but when uh, it's beneficial to have like four of an a figure that is worth like ninety dollars. Yeah, same can be said about um, like Dark Phoenix and like ID cards and stuff like that. Yeah, and so I mean that's so I think where we're at with the watch list and everything. So we'll see what happens, but uh, overall. Those have been the thoughts and opinions brought to you by Dial H for Hero Clicks. If you, if you want some thoughts and opinions, well, you can keep listening because we're full of them. Uh, but if you want some cool stuff, you should check out CoolStuffInc.com where you can find the newest and latest Hero Clicks sealed and singles, uh, including all of this Empire stuff. I checked out. I checked it out earlier, and they do have most of the set up. Some of it's already sold out, but uh, yeah, it's all up there, and you can probably still buy some boosters at this point, so check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Guys, if you want to uh, support us directly, you can do so on Patreon.com slash for Heroclix. There's a link in the podcast description below. A dollar a month, anything uh, super helps us out in order to get more podcast equipment uh, to justify some awesome time driving to film really cool videos, to do all sorts of stuff for you guys. So if you enjoy this content, please consider supporting us on Patreon, writing us a review on Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, any of those places. Uh, those are all huge. If you want to send us a message uh, like Bill and Luke did, you can do so on our Patreon Discord when you join, or you can obviously send us messages like Malcolm does and just shoot them over to us on Facebook uh, or our Twitter, which is also in the link of the description below. I want a quick shout out to some patrons. Uh, Alex Morse, Matt Reed, Lucas Tom Van Holland, Kevin Nelson, some awesome, awesome patrons here. We also had some people join us this month and last month that I forgot to give a shout out to. So uh, Dexter Nelson, he joined us this month, which is really awesome. Dennis Ryan, Zeph Balsi, and Sin, S-Y-N, uh, joined us all in November. Uh, so thank you guys so much for joining. I'll try to be on top of giving shout outs uh, more so because we really do appreciate uh, all the love and support you guys give us just as much as I love sending out fun tokens that we get to design and everything that you guys get to use. And I love seeing people use those tokens. I love seeing people ask for tokens. Um, it's awesome. So, yeah. I think it's great. So thanks for supporting us on Patreon, guys. And of course, like I said earlier, if you want to see more of the cool, awesome videos and stuff we do, go ahead, subscribe to us on YouTube. That is really, really huge for us because it's a ton of fun to make YouTube videos. Uh, I genuinely kind of just make YouTube videos a little bit for myself, honestly, just because I, if I want to make it, I make it and it'll be just kind of fun, you know? So I just have a good time making them. Don't worry about uh, too much anything and just sort of like, you know, go in there, make some fun videos and hopefully you guys enjoy them and you kind of, you seem to. So yeah, that is all. That's all my plugs. So like always guys, 
Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.